There are certain people who are just so special they leave an irreplaceable mark on your life and when they are gone nothing is ever quite the same. You know my grandpa Jake Cornelson was one of those men. When you were with him you couldn't help but feel loved and I always knew he was proud of me. He loves the Lord and he loved to bake. I decided I wanted to make a tribute to him. So I decided I'm going to learn how to bake his carrot cake. You see, he loved to bake, and he loved to bake carrot cake and pie mostly. But he was especially known for his carrot cake. It was his signature. Right around the time I put my faith in Christ in 2004, the church that I had joined was doing their annual missions pie auction. I believe my grandpa would have loved to be a part of that. It would have combined his love for God and his love to reach people with his love for baking. And in 2005, I could have had the chance to invite him to bake his cake, but I just kind of got caught up in life and I didn't ask him. And little did I know that in that, the fall of that year, he was going to pass away and I never have the chance again. And so every year when pie auction comes up, I have the sense that, man, I really wish I would have done that with him. And I just thought for this year, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to bake his carrot cake and put it up for auction as a tribute to a man who deserves to be honored. Who was Jake Cronelson? Oh man, that's hard to say. Um, well, Grandpa, obviously, I didn't even know his name was Jake, probably until I was 10 or 12 years old before you realized his name is Jake. He is just the best man ever. He, he was fun, he was honest, he was hardworking, he loved us kids, and he, he would romp and play with us even when he was, you know, older and couldn't do it quite so well. He was just, he was love, literally love. He showed it every time you saw him, whether you would go to their house or he would come over, a hug and just smiling and love like it, seriously he just epitome of love to me was him you know and his loud booming voice you knew he was coming into the room but I loved it he was huge on hugs he could squeeze you like you know like the big bear hug kind of squeeze um, he always knew how much grandpa loved you that, that is for for sure um, he loved his grandkids a lot, I think, yeah. He was very, very obvious about that, very loving and affectionate, and um, he was a good man. He's a good guy. Always a very kind person to me. Always, from day one, always kind. Always accepted me for who I was. Never, I never felt like I should be different. He made people feel cared about because he really did care. So when he, like, somebody will ask you, oh, how's your day going? They're not really listening for the answer. They're expecting a fine, how's yours? But Grandpa really meant it. Like, he really meant it when he asked you how things were going or, or when he wished you well for something or if things weren't going well and he'd say, you know, well, God bless you and hopefully you get better or whatever. Um, he meant it. And he didn't care, stranger on the street or waitress in the store or use his own grandkids or whatever. Like, he just cared about people. He loved his family. The, the whole family. Grandpa would introduce you to somebody, like you could tell he was very proud of you. He was very, you know, honored that you were his grandchild. Like, I don't know, <laughs> even though he didn't really have anything to do with it. I feel like everybody loved him. Anybody who met him would love him. He made us be, feel special. Yeah, because he loved us. He did give me heck once, because I was young and I did not want to touch the dead chicken. We were supposed to help him carry the chickens from one place to another, and he had to grab my legs, and I did not want to. And I was standing there whining, and he got mad at me. I was like, no, you're picking them up now. So I did. I carried them outside where I was supposed to, whining the whole way and crying and going, <laughs> I was born in Mexico, where my parents lived. And uh, we lived there till I was almost 16, and then the whole family moved to, to Canada. First 40 years that I remember, or 45 years I remember, he was a very hardworking man. He, in Mexico, he worked at a feed mill. We had a little farm. We had um, my dad had um, 60 acres of land, which is not a whole lot 
we had we had a few animals, we had a few cows, which we milked, and we had a few chickens and pigs, whatever. But no, farming was very hard, and and back then there was no irrigation, so we, we panted on the rain. And if the rain didn't come, then there was no crop. My dad made a drastic change um, in his Christianity when my brother passed away. As a result, uh, was a much more pleasant person to be around. <laughs> like, yes, he always talked about God. Like, that was always like the first thing, you know, kind of not out of his mouth, but you, he would talk about it often. And I just knew from the way he was, the way he acted, and at his funeral, when the pastor said, like, every day he would pray for all of his grandchildren, I didn't know that part. And now looking back over my life, like, with him, I know he did. I, and I felt, like I said, love. And that, to me, just the way his love was, was only from God because he had just this acceptable love. He loved church. He went to, to prayer meetings and to evening services and that kind of thing he he did as long as I can remember. He was a warrior for God, I tell you. Praying was not an issue. He prayed for his family. When they were still living in their house and stuff, they would have a uh, Bible study at their house with the young people of the church. Um, and I think Grandpa really enjoyed that. The pastor of that church, he said that Jake was a man of prayer. Church also brought him joy. He enjoyed the singing and he especially enjoyed the praise songs. They were his favorite and he sang very loud. I felt God through him. When he had his knee surgery, he, they couldn't sedate him so he was awake and they replaced his knee. So there's like bone saws, like horrible noises. So he started to try to, to sing, to try to like, I guess drown out the noises. So he was singing his hymns and stuff and then they had to tell him to be quiet because the doctors and nurses couldn't talk to each other when he was singing too loud. Missions was very dear on his heart, especially family that they would all be Christians, yes. That was very dear to him. Oh, he loved playing games, almost any kind of games, and he was very competitive. He liked playing. Aggravation, or if he could win me on stock ticker, which was just about never. But when he did, then uh, that was odd. He loved Dutch Blitz, but man, you had to be careful to get your fingers out of the way, because when he'd slam the card down, if you were both going for the same thing, you'd break fingers, <laughs> you get in his way. Um, so we would play croquet in the park, and we would have like watermelon and, well, kicking, I don't even know if I say that right. And he liked puzzles, which also he could spend hours on. Of course, he liked going out for coffee and visiting with his friends. He loved to talk, he loved, he loved to visit with people and neighbors, and he, could talk with anybody. And he loved it. He loved getting in there, playing games with the grandkids, and yeah, he was probably louder than all of them put together. <laughs> Without a doubt. You could hear him a mile away, especially when he's happy and laughing his big boisterous laugh, so. He also built picnic tables. He built a lot of picnic tables. He built those wooden seats that you use for sitting around a fire with the little tables in the middle. Carrot cake was given to us uh, and uh, he fell in love with the cake and so he asked for the recipe and after that he made it often. He would make it fairly often, yeah, it was good. His carrot cake, well, yeah, was still the best. I um, have yet to try one exactly like his since. You know what, I, you know, I honestly, I can't tell you what it is that makes it so good. I don't watch him make it because there's so much lard in there and you know like oh your heart stops just thinking about it <laughs> but it was just so tasty like I don't know he just he just made the best carrot cake ever if you were at their house then um, you're definitely gonna eat at least right so um, you couldn't leave without eating if my dad's carrot cake had sold at a mission for $700, my dad would have been. Beyond elated, honored, happy, ecstatic. He would have been a, the proudest grandpa in town. Especially to know that it would benefit um, other people that are in need. Yeah, without a doubt, he'd be over the moon. Um, he was a very giving man, um, of his time especially. Um, so I, I think, I think that would warm his heart. He would be so proud. So there was nothing particularly special or secret about my grandpa's carrot cake. It was just 
moist and tasty. Everybody loved it. He would always serve it in an 11 by 7 rectangular pan with one coating of cream cheese and serve it right out of that pan. Uh, this is for pie auction and looks matter. So we're going to dress it up. I'm going to double his recipe. I'm going to make three tiers. I'm going to put his cream cheese icing in between the tiers. Then I'm going to cover the whole thing with buttercream icing and then dress it up with some decoration and some, some piping. So I think it's going to look great and I think it's going to go for a lot of money. pinches instead of the pinch measuring cup. These can be added all at once. Open them up, slide these into there. Let's see how they look now. Let's see what the toothpick does. Perfect. Go. And then carefully flop it onto its face. There we go. Right out. There we go. And there we go. salt is unexpected but it's actually quite nice in here. Try to center it up nicely here. again. Beside you and say howdy, partner. Howdy. Time to get my cowboy on. Here we go. One, two, three. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah. By and by, I'll fly away. Two, three, four. Well. It's our annual pie auction again this year, and this year my message is entitled Eat, Pray, Love. We eat pie and we pray, and we, of course, love our world enough to do something about it. And sent them out two by two before his face to every city and place where he himself was about to go. I know in this room there will be people that have never invited Christ into your own life. There are people here. And these stories I talked about, the other world, well, God's doing things right here in our own city and in our own location. And I want to give you an opportunity, if you've never invited Christ into your life, if you're not sure if you were to die today, if you go to heaven, you're the one I'm talking to. Ken's our live auctioneer. 
He's got his great friend Henry. He's going to be helping out as well. $2,100. Sold. $2,000. Sold. All Thank right. you. Sold. Good work. You bet. All right. We are at number 96, which is Grandpa's famous carrot cake. Now, this is a carrot cake. Everybody likes carrot cake. It's got... Those aren't real carrots on the top, by the way. You, these, are, these are icing or cake carrots, but this is a phenomenal Grandpa's Carrot Cake. Grandpa, Take a look wow. at that. Here we go, Grandpa's where are you? Hey, what are you gonna pay? Here we go, 500. Hey, but five, five, but you got 500 where? Who said 500? Hey, five, but you got, did you get five? At five, 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 but you got five, but you got five, go ahead here. 500, seven half, at 500, 750. I got 500 right here, 750. Hey, but you got 600. Hey, at five, but you got 600 now. At five, but you got six here, but you got 600. At 500, but you got 600. At five, but you got six here now, 607. At seven, but you got seven. At seven, now, 707, 707, 707, 707, 707. 800 now, 800 on the bed, eat, 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 can right Home in the back, bro. A thousand dollars in the blue section. One thousand right there. Hey, but the better nine hundred. One thousand. Hey, but the better one right there. Hey, but the better one. One, but you go one thousand. Nine hundred bid. One thousand. Thank you. Eleven hundred. Twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Eleven is here. Now twelve. At twelve, but you go twelve. Hey, but the better eleven or twelve. Hey, eleven or twelve. Thirteen. Hey, but the better about thirteen. At thirteen, but you go thirteen hundred. At twelve, but you go thirteen. Thirteen, but you go thirteen now. Hey, but you go thirteen. 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 Work. At twelve hundred, but you go thirteen. Thirteen hundred. Sold twelve hundred dollars. Sold yeah, twelve hundred. Thank work. you. Good work. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. So amazing. Okay, tell us we're going to do the auction. Let's do it. I don't even know. It's just like, it's so cool. Do you hold this one for you now? Four of your mans. Oh, we're going to be four. We're going to bring you in the back. It's so good. This really means a lot, you know? I know. Yeah. It's a So, we bring our mummy to the moon. Is that the three more or is it nine million years left? And it's the man, not the last million years of the man. So, we'll find out what it is. On the wings of prayer, just close your eyes and open your heart and feel your worries and care of the part. Just heal yourself to the Father of God and let him hold you secure in his love. For life on earth grows more and more with endless problems that can't be solved. But God only asks us to do our best, then he will take over and finish the rest. So when you are tired, discouraged and blue, there is always one door that is open to you, and that is the door to the house of prayer. And you'll find God waiting to meet you there. And the house of prayer is no farther away than the quiet spot where you kneel and pray. For the heart is a temple, and God is there, and we place ourselves in the body care. And He hears every prayer and answers each one. When we pray in His name, Thy will be done. And the burdens that seem to have to bear are lifted away on the wind of prayer. 